Hi friends, this is Shridhi Joshi and today I'm going to talk about spine management. Let's see. Before we learn spine management, we need to know about some basic stuff like what which muscles are local muscle, which muscles are global muscle, what type of exercise we provide and we have to see some description of this exercise. So first of all, we are going to see local muscle. So what is local muscle? Local muscles are located centrally or deep. Here we can see that this is local muscle. These are located centrally and deep. The main function of local muscle is to provide intersegmental stability from vertebra to vertebra. They support and stabilize, for example, deep cervical flexor, rotator cuff muscles, rhomboids, gluteals, external oblique vastus medialis oblicus this all muscle are local muscle the second is global muscle global muscles are located laterally or superficially their main function is to provide support for cervical spine and produce movement this muscle are specifically uh, located laterally and that will provide your muscular movement means they will produce the movement for example sternocleidomastoid upper trapezius levator scapulae iliosvas latissimus dorsi rectus spinae rectus abdominis this all muscle are global muscles if we are looking for some patients and uh, if we are giving some exercise for them so that time we have to remember some precautions so let's see some precaution in spine rehabilitation so conditions are like um, intervertebral disc lesions or osteoporosis so for that we need to take some precaution for example we have to avoid a dynamic uh, trunk flexor exercise because that increase intra-abdominal pressure and that will cause to increase in compressive force for your vertebral body mainly we have to t uh, take caution for it, uh, example if uh, there is increase in neurological symptoms and pain with flexion exercise we have to stop and notify to their physician the second one is low back pain and uh, hypermobility or instability so for that patient we need to avoid bilateral straight leg raising and uh, lowering exercise which cause pull of iliosvas muscle on lumbar vertebra for nerve root compression, arthritis and radiculopathy, we have to avoid and range extension exercise in prone, modify in quadrup position and use isometric exercise. Now we are going to see exercise introduction. So let's have a look for that. For example, for non-weight bearing approach, what will be the patient presentation? When we can use non-weight bearing approach for patients for spine rehabilitation? If patient is in acute stage and he has signs and symptoms of pain, muscle guarding and uh, he is not able to tolerate upright position. So for that time we have to use a non-weight bearing approach and pain is relieved by some test maneuver that indicates we have to use non-weight bearing approach for that patient as it is in acute stage. So as a treatment in non-weight bearing approach we use cervical collar and uh, we are giving rest for them. For lumbar we can give corset and uh, patient can uh, walk on treadmill with harness to decrease spine loading. Co stability with the arm abduction and hand motion, aquatic exercise uh, without uh, buoyant lift belt. This all are given in non weight bearing approach. Now we are going to see uh, lumbar spine extension bias which is known as extension approach. So patient is having presentation of symptoms like uh, pain is radiating and uh, that is uh, also in dermatomal pattern. Typically patient is having flexed posture and uh, lateral shift is present so patient will move away from painful side and uh, perform sustained extension exercise test so after lateral shift we have to check that the centralization of the symptoms has to occur or not so for this patient in early phase we can give non weight bearing exercise like bed rest and corset for partial weight bearing phase use crutches for walking and for full weight bearing walk normally without any assistance exercise like lying in prone prone on elbow and prone on hand 
prone precepts standing extension and lateral shift we can give for this patient and that time we have to check for centralization of the symptoms if peripheralization of symptoms is there immediately we have to stop the exercise and notify to their doctor now we are going to see uh, lumbar spine extension ex exercise uh, precautions so we should not give extension exercise especially patient is having pain and which is not relieved by any position patient is having peripheralization of the symptoms which increase with the extension exercise that may cause uh, increase in the stenosis and uh, pain especially present for that patient and if patient is having lateral protrusion so that time we cannot uh, uh, give them an extension bias exercise if patient is feeling subtle anesthesia bowel and uh, bladder habit is changed so that indicates cauda equina lesion in cauda equina lesion we have to avoid extension exercise because it may compress spinal cord if patient is having extreme pain and he is guarding the area with his hand so that time we have to avoid this extension bias exercise especially for disc lesion avoid flex position and flexion exercise until symptoms are resolved so for extension bias patient disc lesion um, is flex position is avoided now we are going to see cervical extension bias so for that patient same pattern will be there as the lumbar but especially in this patient pain is in dermatomal pain pattern and it is radiating to upper extremity patient is having forward head uh, posture or flexed posture if uh, lateral shift is present uh, patient will move away from the painful side and rotation of the head if uh, we are performing sustained spinal extension test after the lateral shift the centralization of symptom should occur flexion test increase the symptoms for this kind of the patient we have to take precaution for example if patient is having peripheralization of the symptoms in upper extremity so we have to stop exercise progression treatment like uh, we can give this patient supine head nodding then for rotated head move head in midline and progress to hyperextension and rotation now we are going to see flexion bias for cervical and lumbar spine let's see patient presentation so patient has a forward head posture if a patient is doing flexion exercise so that is a relaxing position for them if they are doing extension exercise that may increase peripheralization of the symptoms for this kind of the patient uh, we will give the physiotherapy management for acute case we can provide cervical collar to reduce inflammation joint oscillation in acute symptoms like uh, just uh, grade 1 2 and then we have to check the patient or re-examine the patient for cervical spine we have to avoid backward bending or extension no prone lying and no looking upward position and for lumbar spine we have to use uh, pillow under abdomen while lying in prone so for this kind of the patient we have to avoid extension and rotation especially for this patient uh, if patient is having down syndrome rheumatoid arthritis ligament laxity so for that patient this uh, flexion bias is avoided and contraindicated now we are going to see early acute phase subacute phase and return to function phase for different uh, spinal or cervical spine lumbar spine or thoracic spine problems so we have to use uh, this all three phases for any kind of the problem like cervical stenosis or lumbar stenosis or uh, disc herniation is there so for that if patient is in acute phase so it will last up to zero to four week presentation of symptoms like they have muscular weakness sensory changes and pain radiate to upper extremity patient is not able to perform instrumental activity in daily living or activity in daily living so for that patient we have to give uh, physiotherapy management like first of all we need to correct their posture if their posture is not good and again and again we are giving them the exercise there won't be any cure for that patient though we are giving modality or any other stuff it won't relieve so first of all we have to teach them postural education or postural correction keep the spine in neutral while performing activity in daily living if we are giving modalities so we have to give modalities and then rest for three days 
uh, if passive support like corset is needed so we have to provide them and if patient is having uh, less pain so we can provide them pain free range of motion flexion or extension bias according to the lesions or according to the diseases for core strengthening uh, for cervical spine we have to start with supine supine nodding cervical extension then with scapular and shoulder 90 degree flexion and ab duction then for lumbar spine we can teach them drawing in manure and multifidal muscle contraction so start uh, exercise with rolling then gradually sitting standing and walking we have to progress exercise in sitting for 30 minutes then uh, if patient is able to sit greater than 30 minutes and go for uh, standing greater than 50 minutes and walk one mile or more than one mile now we are going to talk about intermediate phase so that will last up to 4 to 12 week it is also known as a subacute phase let's see the patient presentation in intermediate phase a patient might have pain when stress on the tissue positive neurological test and pain with repetitive strain injury or sustained posture there will be limitation in range of motion there is decreased muscular endurance uh, uh, instrumental activity in daily living problem so these are all about patient presentation for physical therapy management uh, if the patient is in intermediate phase, so we have to give them ergonomic advice for posture and postural correction advice. Especially pain-free spinal activities, uh, they have to do activities in pain-free range of motion. Uh, if patient's condition is uh, good or if uh, they can able to give neural tissue mobilization in some condition, so they can give in that condition. Low to moderate intensity exercises are indicated and for stabilization exercise, we have to increase repetition and difficulty level for the progression. We have to give them home exercise program as well. Advanced uh, phase or return to function phase that will last greater than 12 weeks. So patient presentation, pain in repetitive activities, loss of neuromuscular control, patient is unable to perform high intensity exercises and as a physical therapist we have to give exercise in different positions to challenge their balance. So we have to give them balance training and grade 3-4 mobilization is indicated for this kind of the patients and uh, we can advise them uh, self stretching as a home exercise program ergonomic advice at the home and workplace modification we have to give them task specific training and uh, as a home exercise pr uh, program safety body mechanics we have to teach them uh, how they can perform home exercise uh, at which range they can perform everything we need to tell them precaution for spinal exercise also we have we have to advise them because they are doing exercise at the home so some exercises are indicated with the precautions uh, they have to maintain spine control and uh, different muscle exercise so that also we can teach them as a home exercise program let's see postural pain syndrome so before we learn for the postural pain syndrome we need to know about what is posture so in earlier uh, videos we have seen that what kind of the posture are there what happen if we are not in good alignment so this is the posture the patient is in not good uh, alignment means patient is in not neutral position so when patient is in non neutral position they might have problem with their uh, posture so their head comes forward that calls uh, forward head posture uh, in that this is balanced by either and anterior or the posterior force will be increased in the muscle so that will be uh, muscular imbalance means uh, there will be counter uh, pressure or counterbalance is created by the passive tension on the soft tissues so some soft tissues activities are increased like uh, for forward head posture some muscle get tight and some muscle get weak so like that way um, they have tissue problem and if they are keeping their muscle contracted for long time for example if uh, let's take scalene muscle so contraction of scalene muscle compromise and uh, that will lead to here it is scalene and if it is contracted that will increase uh, force on the first rib as we know that uh, it is attached to the first rib so if it is contracted more increase the contraction and the first rib will be elevated so elevation of first rib that will decrease uh, costoclavicular space 
and cos TOS so your forward head posture is directly related to TOS so we have to take care for that patients uh, we have to teach postural correction exercise for that let's see patient presentation brain from mechanical stress or structure is there movement and positional changes relief and the pain like if patient is changing some head movement so that will relieve their pain uh, loss of side bending muscular imbalance ac activity in daily living are effective decreased cardio cardiopulmonary endurance uh, as we know that uh, some muscles are uh, accessory respiratory muscles so if they are uh, they are working more so our cardiorespiratory endurance is decreased neuromuscular problem and muscle guarding is there so for that patient we have to take care like we have to rule out spinal trauma spinal fracture and spinal cord injury like uh, if patient is having spinal cord injury they may have cauda equina lesion so we have to rule out all the conditions with that let's see some red flag in postural pain syndrome if patient is having bilateral neurologic symptoms so for that patient we need to take care that we should not give any physical therapy and we have to refer them to their doctor or orthopedic if patient is having saddle anesthesia and bowel changes that will indicate cauda equina lesion again in this we cannot uh, give physical therapy we have to refer them to their doctor for medical management acetaminophen that relieves their pain NSAIDs mean non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs that will relieve their pain and inflammation corticosteroid and muscular relaxant like cyclobenzaprine and valium as a physiotherapist we have to give them uh, exercise so for acute stage we have to correct their posture let's see if a patient is having considered this is a forward head posture so if patient is having forward head posture and you are giving exercise uh, to relieve their pain but you are not giving them posture correction exercise so that will cause them more pain and it won't be relieved by any modalities again uh, that will be repetitive strain injury for that patient so first of all we need to teach them posture correction exercise and tell them to they have to keep their spine in neutral position while activity in daily living with that we can advise them modalities and rest for 3 days or passive support like a cervical collar we can give them and we have to advise them pain free range of motion exercise for ex extension or flexion bias core strengthening for cervical start with supine position supine nodding cervical extension with scapular and shoulder flexion and abduction for lumbar we can uh, teach them drawing in manual or multifilous muscle contraction then symptoms are resolved so that time we can teach them um, stretching of the tight muscle and strengthen the weak muscle uh, avoid faulty posture teach them body mechanics like keep the spine in uh, neutral by pushing pulling lift squat etc we can teach that patient we have to teach them postural relaxation exercise that is most important for this kind of the patient because uh, if patient is having repetitive faulty posture and that muscles are not getting relaxed so that will create again a uh, faulty posture position so we have to teach them postural relaxation techniques ergonomic advice and workplace modification ergonomics like at home uh, what they can do or at workplace uh, what they can do modification for example for if they are a computer user so they have to keep their uh, computer in front of their eyes uh, so that will uh, create a good posture for them or they won't be able to take care of their position so for that we can advise them uh, like if they are using keypad or mouse so some uh, rest are available for that patient some ha uh, hand rest is there so they can keep uh, their um, position in neutral and they can work like this way we can uh, tell them workplace modification advice now we are going to learn muscular strain or sprain so for uh, ligament sprain and for that uh, we can apply like acute subacute and chronic phase uh, treatment in each and every stage of the muscular strain or sprain or any other conditions so if patient is having muscular strain so it is very common in lumbar region 
localized pain is there so if patient is uh, coming to you and he is uh, telling uh, some chief complaint that uh, he is having localized pain and tenderness in specific regions in lumbar area we have to check the isometric uh, resisted isometric testing so that will exacerbate the symptoms means uh, resisted isometric will increase the pain or symptoms if a patient is uh, doing a passive stretching or if a uh, patient is uh, treated by therapist so that time they will do passive stretching so that will increase their symptom so for that patient medical management will be the same like acetaminophen relieve pain NSAID reduce pain and inflammation muscular relaxant like cyclobenzaprine and valium we can use and corticosteroid are used so as a physical therapist uh, what we can teach them for muscular strain sprain uh, we can teach them um, cor postural correction problem like if they having postural problem for her head or lordosis or kyphosis so we have to correct their posture first to reduce their pain we can give grade 1 and 2 mobilization so that will relieve their pain if it is an acute case uh, if we want to improve range of motion that time uh, we have to give grade 3 and 4 educate the patient to avoid pain provocating activities like if the patient is moving forward so he has to take care he has to bend his knee and take the uh, stuff from down so like that way we have to educate them if patient is having uh, more pain so spine manipulation is also indicated for pain inhibition we can give sensory level tents for pain relief now we are going to learn spondylosis so spondylosis patient have forward head postures a patient feel relaxed and comfortable in flexed position and exercise uh, like extension exercise that will increase the symptoms increase peripheralization for this kind of the patient and for this medical management will be the same like acetaminophen relieves pain NSAID pain inflammation relief and muscle relaxant and corticosteroids are used for spondylosis patients uh, if patient is in uh, early stage so we can provide them cervical collar or if it is in lumbar so we can advise lumbar corset immobilize the inflamed area so if we are giving immobilization that will relieve their inflammation on the tissue and uh, after discontinuation um, this uh, symptoms we can uh, discontinue the use of corset use spinal flexion exercise for pain relief as we have said that patient is having pain in extension activities so we have to give them flexion exercises grade 1 and 2 joint mobilization for pain relief once their symptoms is stabilized that time we have to re-examine the patient and progress for flexion bias we can advise them dynamic stability uh, for cervical and lumbar spine so, uh, they have to avoid uh, uh, for cervical avoid backward bending mean extension looking upward or prone line for lumbar use pillow under your waist or abdomen in prone line uh, we can advise them stand on one leg uh, while standing and if for example if we are working on walmart right so we have to stand for a long time so that time we can advise that keep one stool and uh, keep your leg on that so that will help that kind of the patient if the patient is in sitting so knee position should be above the hips contraindications for exercise uh, in spondylosis so we have to avoid extension exercise with combined rotation because that will increase pain that will uh, problem in some uh, tissues and uh, if patient is having rheumatoid arthritis so for that kind of uh, that patients uh, ligament laxity will be there we have to avoid mobilization and manipulation for rheumatoid arthritis patient with spondylosis now we are going to see spinal stabilization exercise for spondylosis so it is divided in, uh, into four parts first is kinesthetic awareness so what is kinesthetic awareness kinesthetic awareness means your muscle memory how we walk how we eat or how we run so it's always uh, based on our proprioceptive system 
means uh, proprioceptive system means awareness of joint position in space so our kinesthetic sense for example if uh, we take uh, some person is blind so for them if they are walking they will judge the distance with the help of kinesthetic awareness this is just a basic example so if we uh, use this kind of exercise for uh, spinal stability uh, we use uh, spinal motion in safe position like head nodding and pelvic tilting keep spine in neutral position so in that uh, we have to keep the spine in neutral position while sitting standing and supine and uh, if we are doing heavy weight lifting standing or walking at that time also we need to keep our spine in neutral for core stability for cervical we use uh, longer scolai contraction and uh, for lumbar multifidus or transverse or abdominis we, we are using as a drawing in manual and for global uh, muscle control of spine we use cervical spine control or uh, lumbar spine control with activation muscle activation if we are progressing in the functional phase so functional progression of exercise we have to do co-contraction of agonist and antagonistic muscles or use diagonal pattern and uh, first of all we have to uh, tell the patient to do exercise in stable then we have to gradually progress in unstable surface and progress to instrumental activity in daily living sport specific training these are all about spinal stabilization exercise now we are going to see cervical flexor stabilization exercise so if we are going for cervical flexor stabilization exercise the main aim of for this exercise is to activate deep cervical flexor muscles so for that we use pressure biofeedback this is pressure biofeedback um, we keep in the uh, patient uh, cervical spine and this is the meter patient is using so he can use the meter and watch the pressure in that so for cervical spine we need to increase the pressure up to 20 or 22 mmhg or for lumbar it's so 44 mmhg procedure like inflate the pressure cuff so this is pressure cuff we have to inflate the pressure cuff up to 20 mmhg and hold it for 10 seconds and then relax then again increase up to 24 mmhg and relax then up to 30 mmhg increase and then relax like we have to do like this with the gradual uh, increase in the pressure and the repetition should be 10 repetition and 10 second hold in between so gently we have to increase repetition and load so this is cervical flexor stabilization exercise now we are going to see the level of, of exercise for flexor if the patient is doing core stability exercise so for level one we have to do axial flexion or extension repetition is same like 10 repetition 10 second hold patient should be in supine position and for uh, level two we have to uh, this is maximum protection phase so shoulder flexion abduction up to 90 degree external rotation of your arm at the side and patient should be in supine position for level 3 uh, patient should have uh, flexion abduction external rotation and end range diagonal pattern so this we can gradually increase in standing position with uh, we can keep the ball behind their back uh, back of the neck and uh, with with or without support patient can do this exercise and for level 4 like minimum protection phase so for that patient uh, we have to do some functional movement like we have to tell them to reach forward and going backward and um, they have to do some activities uh, which is taking them out of the position they can do some wall pushing ex exercise and without support or with support they can do exercise position it can be in standing with support or without support of the ball now we are going to see extension exercise level for pressure biofeedback if patient is uh, doing in prone positions for extensors so for level one core stability patient has to lift just the forehead uh, from off the table and 10 repetition 10 second hold with prone position then in like uh, level two like uh, that is the maximum protection phase uh, in that we have to take care for the patient so for that reason we have to give them shoulder abduction and shoulder flexion 
here I forgot to mention shoulder flexion so just uh, write it I'm going to uh, write it down here shoulder flexion and abduction with 90 degree external rotation arm by side and uh, we can do this in prone position with or without bowl and if patient is uh, doing level 3 activity maximum to moderate power production phase so for that shoulder flexion abduction external rotation with diagonal pattern and for uh, this patient patient should be in prone horizontal abduction and scapula ab uh, adduction so if patient is in prone position uh, he has to adduct his uh, scapula this way and uh, progress with the ball in sitting position if patient is in sitting position so he can progress with ball and lastly is uh, level 4 minimum to no protection phase so for that just functional movement reaching forward up out and standing with support or without support patient can do wall pushing activities like uh, here we can draw the one wall and ask patient to uh, push the wall a patient can do with the help of the ball or without the support now we are going to see physical therapy management for spondylolysis and spondylolysis so let's see pre patient presentation for that uh, patient may have hypermobile spine loss of neuromuscular control midrange uh, mid catches there for that patient fracture of pars intraarticularis in spondylolysis and if listesis is noted so slippage is uh, noted in that kind of the patient mostly l5 s1 slippage mostly patient have symptom uh, asymptomatic but pain with extension and rotation uh, of the spine and uh, positive test is stock standing test is positive for them it is seen in uh, oblique view for x-ray we can see the scotty dog with collar for pars fracture and later view for listhesis if we see the medical management it is again same acetaminophen for relieving pain and nsaid pain and inflammation relief corticosteroid muscle relaxant and uh, cyclobenzaprine and valium we use for that patient let's see early management early physical therapy management for spondylolysis and spondylolysthesis if patient is in acute phase so we should give immobilization use uh, thoraco lumbar spine sacral arthrosis and boston brace after recovery we have to discontinue this brace uh, we have to correct their postures, uh, posture, so we have to keep the spine in neutral uh, while doing activity in daily living. We have to give modalities and rest for 3 days and passive support if needed. Uh, we have to advise them pain free range of motion exercise, flexion and extension bias. If they are doing core strengthening, so that time uh, we need to give them a cervical um, capital nodding and maintain the cervical lordosis. For lumbar, we have to keep the spine in neutral position and uh, drawing in manual transverse abdominis activation and multifilous contraction. We have to do progression, so begin with the supine and progress to quadrup position in sitting, standing, partial lunge, and squat. Teach them uh, functional activities like uh, reaching, pull, push, etc. And uh, especially um, spine manipulation is contraindicated as it is sparse fracture and slippage. Ipsilateral spine, side, uh, side band and contralateral extension plus rotation that is again contraindicated for this kind of the patients. Now we are going to see spinal stenosis. So that patient may have pre uh, presentation like the for that posture or flexed posture because that relieve their symptoms like flexion, uh, flexion exercise or flexion position relieve symptoms uh, and uh, extension exercise increase symptoms because narrow, narrowing of the foramen and comprehension of the nerve. So they may feel peripheralization and bilateral pain, paresthesia in back, buttock, thigh, cleave and feet. Pain increase uh, with walking and decrease with rest. Medical management is same. For spinal stenosis as a physical therapy, we have to use flexion bias approach as we have already mentioned in our earlier slide how to use the flexion bias approach. 
uh, if they're tight hip flexors and weak hip extensors so they have posterior pelvic tilting exercise to correct this and if we are using traction so we have to use short duration and static for acute condition ipsilateral side bending uh, rotation and extension is specially contraindicated for this kind of patient let's have a look for uh, disc prolapse for postural disc prolapse patient presentation is pain paresthesia radicular pain uh, problem in activity in daily living especially patient is having low back pain that is the first diagnostic sign for them if uh, low back pain is increased with disc pressure in the postural uh, herniation or disc prolapse if patient is having central bulge so for that patient pain paresthesia and radicular pain and problem with high activity in daily living same way they have uh, low back pain in uh, as a first sign and uh, uh, if they are doing uh, low back um, if they are doing bending exercise so that will increase their disc pressure and uh, if uh, we are as a physiotherapist if we use uh, some exercise so we have to give them dynamic stability exercise for spine and pelvis we can use pressure biofeedback educate the patient for avoiding bending twisting carrying heavy loads overhead activities upper extremity uh, especially and we have to give traction for that patient uh, especially manipulation is contraindicated in the patient who has um, rheumatoid arthritis down syndrome or ligamentous laxity let's see now compression so patient presentation they don't have a pain in reclined position and semi reclined position pain is uh, having uh, if we categorize this pain so characteristic will be shooting burning and stabbing type of the pain pain increase with weight bearing activities and relieved by flexion medical management is same and uh, as a physical therapist we have to educate them for postural correction and use a flexion bias exercise a contraindication if uh, manipulation is contraindicated in rheumatoid arthritis and now we are going to see some um, nerve root lesions so if the patient is having l3 nerve root lesion so pain lo uh, location will be in upper buttock whole anterior thigh and knee and especially medial knee now we are going to see specific disc lesion and which nerve is affected. This is very important for management aspect as well as a differential diagnosis aspect. So if L3 disc lesion, L4 disc lesion is there, L3-4. So you remember that your spinal nerve root exit one level below in your lumbar spine. So L4 is affected. In this kind of patient, we can see this is the L4 diametome, so your anterolateral thigh, medial leg, and uh, your dorsum of foot is affected. Hypothesthesia at the grade 2, we can notice for this patient. So for that patient, motor extensor hallucis longus and tiberis anterior muscle is affected, knee jerk is lost or absent or weak. And for L4-5 disc lesion, L5 now root is affected. So for that patient, uh, posterior and uh, lateral thigh is affected. Second and third toe is affected. Dorsum of foot is affected. And outer leg, hypoesthesia is noted. For that patient, extensor hallucis is longus. Dorsiflexor muscle is affected. And uh, reflex like medial hamstring is affected. And for... Um, L4, 5, L5, S1 level, S1 is affected. So for that patient, um, actually uh, reflex is diminished or absent. And especially for this patient, this is S1 nerve root dermatome. So lateral plantar aspect of your foot is affected and posterior aspect is also affected. A patient may have a problem with ankle plantar flexors. So this is all about your nerve root disc lesions and uh, now we are going to see uh, facial joint syndrome so facial joint syndrome uh, pain is referred in gluteal region and thigh uh, if it is in lumbar region and they may have morning pain and primarily with compression decrease pain with flexion increase with extension patient may feel 
stiff on rising and that will ease in R. So if a pain increases sharply with certain movement like extension, we have to stop the exercise for that patient. And uh, we have to teach them pain-free range of motion. So that will decrease their symptoms. Stationary position can increase the pain. Pain increase with ipsilateral side bending and rotation. So for that patient, we have to use flexion bias approach as extension is increasing their space uh, problem. So uh, flexion bias approach is mostly helpful for them pa their patient and gapping or manipulation is also helpful for facet joint syndrome. Uh, especially extension is contraindicated for uh, facet joint syndrome because that will aggravate your symptoms. Thanks for watching and for future videos don't forget to subscribe. If you have any doubts related to topics in physical therapy exams, please let me know in my comment section so I can make a series of the videos on that. Till that time, stay positive. Bye-bye.